Did you know that the World Health Organization considers depression to be a leading cause of disability worldwide? Hopkins says people routinely say that depression is the worst thing that's happened to them and the reason that's offered is their brains don't work properly. They can't make decisions and they aren't sure of themselves because everything requires huge mental effort. Welcome to Wonder Woman in Sport. We're putting depression under the spotlight for the fans' knowledge. And remember, you can join in on our conversation. Please go ahead, Facebook, give our page a thumbs up there. We're on Twitter as well. At Quesa Sports is the handle. Use hashtag WWS. And we're on the gram as well. So check out our videos and give our pictures a like. Well, tonight's Wonder Woman in Sport is a two-times comrades runner, Nike Pacer, where she helps hundreds of people become better runners. With education being an important part of her life, she holds three degrees and the latest, a master's from Wits University. This ambitious lady is also a video specialist at Google South Africa, where she's in charge of helping brands build media strategies for YouTube across Africa. And just when you think that's all that she's got going on, she's also an anti-depression activist who started a campaign called Rise 18. My name is uh, Sandile Mkiza. I'm Wandile Zondo. My name is Manfred Seidler. I'm Olwetu Shabane. My name is Nicola Granger. In 2013, uh, the 26th of January, uh, I was in a motorbike accident. I got married very young, at the age of 21. It was at that point where you have all kinds of thought going through your head. I told him a million times, no, no, no. When the budget crunch hit, they said to me, sorry, no longer. That overnight sensation of what do I do now, that's what hit me. Is it worth living? You get to a crossroad. Do you want to live? That's the first thing. And the answer to that was no. My weight was fluctuating up and down. It was definitely a state of depression. I didn't even realize it. I was going through a very, very bad depression. The doctor called back and she's like, this person gave you an STD. It was at that point where you, you have all kinds of thought going through your head. I want to die. And here to tell us all about it, we welcome Zanele Flatswayo to Wonder Woman in Sports. Zanele, so good to have you. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for having me. We saw a short clip. Why those faces to give identity to depression? I wanted to cover different aspects about depression. I wanted to look at different people that suffer from depression. Um, I totally believe that I'm not the only person that has been affected. So I wanted other people to tell and share their own stories. It was a very difficult journey to get the people because I asked more than five people. Um, but it's only them that, that were willing to tell their stories. And understandably so because depression is something that's very difficult to deal with. And the ripple effects go beyond the person but it also affects the families. And people had to talk to their families to really talk about their stories and what they've gone through. Depression, it is, I, I think it's a, it's a heavy discussion, you Definitely. know. And why would you say, or do you think that it's something that is so shied away from? It's like it's a secret. If you do have depression, don't mention it. Don't. It's the biggest kept secret probably worldwide. Definitely. I think it's because um, when people are depressed, really, they, they detach from everything that they love or they're disinterested. And the society deems that as weak, especially if with men it's even worse. And in the black culture it's even worse because men are not supposed to be weak. Men are not supposed to show their emotions. So when, when a man is either depressed or suicidal, it is something that they hide because they don't want to come across or deemed as a weak individual. So I think that's why it becomes a secret. I guess we throw it around so lightly, right? Oh, I'm mm -hmm. so depressed. This Definitely. happened today. I'm so depressed. That yeah. happened today. Yeah. What is depression? How did it introduce itself to you? I didn't know depression before it introduced itself to me and my family. Um, my father in 20, 2008 um, was depressed. And at the time, we didn't know as a family. I just saw him being different. He was detached. He was disinterested and stuff. Um, me and my father were very close. We used to spend a lot of time together. Daddy's girl. Um, yeah, I was, I was the <laughs> typical daddy's girl. Um, he took me through school. Um, he was always at every parent's meeting. My father took me to the salon. Like, oh, cute. He was just he'd there. wait for you? Yeah, he'd wait for me. Like, literally wait for me and... Um, he took me, he'll take me out for like a restaurant, you know, so he was always there. Mm -hmm. um, and um, in 2018, he suffered from depression and subsequently committed suicide. How was that when you got the news? Where were you? What were you doing when, I guess, this hero uh, in your eyes yeah. takes his own life? 
I was at home um, at my grandmother's house um, and it was around June, which is Father's Day. I was planning Father's Day um, to obviously spend time with my dad. What were you planning? Um, I just wanted to take him out, you know. Uh, I wanted it to be me this time as opposed to him taking me out. I just wanted to spend time with him. Um, and I just started working. I finished off my first degree and I just started working. Um, and um, I was at home and one of his neighbors came home um, to tell us that um, he's basically hung himself. And when I heard that, I, I, f I think a part of me left at that point in time. Because like an outer body experience? Yeah, like I, I couldn't believe it because he's always been a hero um, for everyone, not only for me, but for the family, for the community. Um, and I think my... I always say this to people that I think the first two weeks I went through the shock over and over again. Like it was as if someone had said to me, your father has died, your father has committed suicide. I'd be like sitting around or having a conversation with someone and then in my head I would literally hear that and I would go through the shock over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, I cannot explain the pain that I went through. It was just unbearable because I'd literally wake up in the middle of the night and scream, you know, because at that point you don't know what to deal with at first, whether you deal with the fact that your father is dead or whether your father has committed suicide. Mm. So it's, it's a double-edged edged sword because you don't know what to deal with first. And, it, and at that point in time, everything hits you all at once. Does it ever go away? Does that shock and horror of hearing the news ever go away? Does it ever subside? Does it ever get better? I don't think it ever goes away. Um, at first, you, you go through the whole process of denial. Um, I never went to the gravesite. Um, I, I was so angry towards my father. And I, I, I thought to myself, you know, you're so selfish. How can you leave me now? Um, I was actually doing, I was studying my honors at the time. Um, and we were even planning my graduation party. Um, and I, I said to myself, like, how can you leave now? And not only for me, but for my siblings, my younger siblings. I mean, at the time, my brother was seven years old. My sister was 12 years old at the time. And I felt blessed to a certain extent because at least I had my dad for 24 years. With them, I kept on thinking, they'll never, he'll never be there when my sister um, finishes matric, mm. when my brother finishes matric when I get my first car, when I get married, I guess, all yeah, of those walking things. walking you down the aisle, you know, like he's not exactly, around. Exactly, you know, so um, it, it's very difficult to, to deal with and it never really goes away. You just learn to live with the pain. And I think at this point in time with the campaign that I've started, I'm, I have to face my own challenges because I don't think I personally have dealt with it. And now that I have to talk about it all the time, in a way it's a healing uh, process, process, but in the at the same time, it, it takes me back to 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 that dark moment mm. when when I finally realized that I'm no longer going to see his face, I'm no longer going to hear his voice, I no longer can call him and say, "Papa, this is what happened today," because I called him for everything, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I was never going to be able to mm. do that. At times, I would even dial his number and it would just go to voicemail just for me to hear his voice that was mm. more than enough for me mm -hmm. and we appreciate you here on Wonder Woman in Sport for going back to that dark place and being so brave to share what I think is an extraordinary story let's talk about that rise 18 and why it is your dad suffered from depression you don't but yeah. you feel you have something to contribute what is it that you're hoping to accomplish by running 18 races so many people ask me why the name Rise 18. Um, I always say this, that it took me 10 years to finally be able to be brave enough to talk about it. And 2018 is the year that I decided to rise um, to, to redefine my father's legacy. Because I think in many instances, my dad has been defined by the way that he died and not the way that he lived. And he was an amazing dad. Um, so that's what I want to do. I also want to raise awareness about depression and suicide purely because I've been through the experience and I realize now that we all are going through stuff. We might not, people may not be depressed, um, but the way or the circumstances around that may lead people to depression. And I think it's something that a lot of people need to learn about, people need to empower themselves about, to really help individuals that are around us who might be suicidal, who might be going through depression. I mean, a, a simple example is, is a student um, that committed suicide last year at WITS 
who was um, encouraged to jump off a building. You know, she was standing at the top of a building and people were like, jump, 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 thinking that maybe it's a joke or something. And she, she actually was depressed and suicidal and she jumped off. Um, and she died. And she died. You know, so for that to even happen at um, a university where students are exposed to so much information, but for them to even have those type of misconceptions that, oh no, if somebody is standing at the top of the building, maybe they're just joking around, let's just encourage them yes, to jump. Yeah. You know, so for me, it's about raising awareness, it's about educating people, and people really finding a way of talking about this uncomfortable conversation or uncomfortable topic, because there's a lot of us that, that go through that. Mm -hmm. um, like I say, um, there's a lot of people that we know who might be depressed or might be suicidal, but we wouldn't know how to deal um, or how to support them and give them the support that they need. How are you hoping that the support comes about by running these 18 races? It's about rising. It's about the stigma attached to depression, hopefully that dissolving by what you're doing. But where is the safe space to come out? We see Zanella doing this really brave thing, but where is the loophole? Where do our viewers or anyone who needs the help, I mean, where is that cushioning? Where do they go? So the, I'm currently raising funds for SADAC, which is the South African Depression and Anxiety Group. They are the largest um, NGO that really supports people that suffer from mental illness. People can even send call me backs and they'll be able to call them back. Um, I'm obviously not a psychologist um, and, and I think my role in this whole journey is to um, just raise awareness and tell people that they can they can reach out to organizations like SADAC They can find support groups um, in and around their areas mm -hmm. because SADAC has support groups across uh, across the country But I think it's it's high time that we even use platforms like social media to tell our stories um, part of the uh, journey is to get other people to tell their stories as well and I've managed to get five people whose stories I'll be rolling out in, 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 in the weeks to come. And I think, like I said, I mean, there's platforms, there's social media, and, and at times people even would have, uh, will write something on their statuses and they commit suicide. You know, so I think it's high time that we use these platforms in a more effective way mm. to really reach out to somebody. If somebody has, has written something like that on their wall, or if you pick up, you know, some, some differences in the conversations, let's use those platforms to actually help and support one another. I have to agree also, remembering that SADIG is one of the largest uh, non-profit organizations on the African continent. So if it is that you do want to reach out, we will be giving details a little later in the show. So now let's talk about the running. Yeah. So, was it something that you always did? This takes you way back to school, or was it something that is fairly, fairly new in your life? You know, I actually used to hate running. <laughs> 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 running was not something that I really liked. I, I, I used to train, I used to go to the gym. Um, but it was but, never but competitively. It was never, no, it was never competitively. It was like, okay, fine, let me just gym. I need to look uh, cute. I need to look cute in a dress <laughs> and whatever. That's what it was about, <laughs> nothing else. Um, and when my dad died, I needed to find something to do. And for some strange reason, I just decided to run, you know, because I got tired of crying. Mm -hmm. Was it perhaps the, the therapy or the solace that you found in running, perhaps running away yeah. uh, from, from the problem that you had to face? Definitely at the beginning, it was me running away from everything, the feelings of, of bitterness, of being angry. That's what it was about at the beginning. But as I ran more and more, I actually realized that I actually love running and I have a passion for it. It makes me feel strong. And I, I always say this to people that when you're running towards, uh, if you have a race that you're competing with, I mean, in, there's always something that you're going to get at the end, that middle. That middle, yes. It's a fulfillment of something. <laughs> and in life, you go through life not feeling like that. You know, sometimes in a day you might have so many meetings and you might not necessarily feel a sense of fulfillment, but with running you always know that you're working towards your goal and there's something that you're working towards and you're going to uh, get this thing at the end. Whether it's finishing the race at whatever time or getting that medal, I guess there's always finishing a sense the of fulfillment. race in Definitely. itself is an accomplishment yeah. uh, in, its, in its own. Let's talk about uh, getting that medal. This time around, it's 18 races you want to complete. Yeah. What is the big reward at the finish? For me, the big reward is my 18th race is going to be a race called Washi 100 Miler, which is 161 kilometers. That's out in the Eastern Cape, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's 26. It's a race over 26 hours. You start at half past 5 p.m. until the following day. Um, you, you run literally throughout the night. And I think for me, I mean, that is going to be the toughest race that I've ever done in my life. I've done comrades. Compared to comrades? Yes. 106. Uh, well, this one's 106 kilometers, right? 160. 160. Yes. Versus, okay, so yes, yeah. in terms of distance, <laughs> it, it's pretty Definitely, crazy. Yeah. And, and it's not just a physical challenge, but when you run, you have to be 
prepared emotionally, you have to be prepared mentally. And with the project, I'm, I'm realizing that I really, really need to strike a balance across the three. Um, I can't just be physically fit, but I need to um, be mentally prepared for, for, for the journey. And I'm exposed to people's stories as well. People are sharing their stories with me on social media. So that, that's a lot as well emotionally. I have to make sure that I'm fine as well. So for me, the biggest, the biggest goal or the biggest achievement would be to firstly raise awareness and to really try to raise the funds that, that, that are, or the goal of raising 180K. If I can meet that and exceed that, that would really be great. But I think for me, the ultimate goal would be if somebody from the campaign or somebody that's exposed to the campaign, if I save at least one life, I think my purpose would be fulfilled. One life, one life at a time, one life every stride, I guess. You can, of course, support Zanele on this really great mission of hers, Rise 18, and we'll tell you how after the break. Do stay with us. You're watching Wonder Woman in Sport. Thank you so much for staying with us. We do have Zanele Flatswayo with us in studio. And she is recapping that journey of when she fell in love with running and is now doing it all for a good cause. Zanele, you said the running. It's not something you did. Um, it's something you grew to love. Yeah. But when did it become so competitive? I think about maybe four years ago. Um, we, I started running with the like, colleagues and then we did like our first race and I just enjoyed the vibe of, of races and the fact that I'm going to get a medal at the end. <laughs> um, and then that's when I started really taking it seriously. And then in 2016, I was just training for oceans and comrades was not even something that I was even thinking about. This is a two oceans marathon two out those, in Cape Town. Yeah, out in Cape Town, which is a 56 kilometer race. 56? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I was just training for that. And then just like a week before, about two weeks before Oceans, I did the Omdi Dam, which is 50 kilometers. And the people that I was running with, they were like, you're actually ready for comrades. I'm like, no, guys, like I'm planning on doing comrades 2017. And then to cut the long story short, we then look for a race number and I got a race number. And two months before comrades, I then decided that I'm going to do comrades. Um, two months before yeah. people train their whole lives long yeah, so, to do comrades. Yeah. So that's when I decided to, to do comrades and... I was there. I, I couldn't believe it. Like on that day, I'm like, am I really here? Am I going to run 90 kilometers? It's was so it scary. Was it uphill or downhill that year? It was downhill. All right. It was downhill. Last year was uphill. Um, so, yeah. Running. What happens when you're out there? What happens in your head? What happens in your heart? What happens to your body when you're out on a long run, like a 56 kilometer one? Sure. For me, when I, when I run, that's the time when I make a lot of decisions because it's just me in my headspace. You know, I think in life, there's so many things that we're doing. People are raising families. There's work, there's school, there's friends, there's family, you know. So when I'm running, that's the time when I get to really reflect on my life and the decisions that I have to make. Um, and I think, you know, once you hit that wall where you're tired and you want to give in, I always say this as well, that when you get to that point and you take that one step, when your pain is heightened and you take that one step beyond that, that changes you forever because you can literally handle anything in life. Mm. Running is a very difficult, just like any sport, because it's, it's, it's physical pain and it's tangible, it's very easy for you to just give in. Um, but because as a person you teach yourself that you're not going to be defined by the pain, you're just going to continue through the pain. It really, really teaches you a lot of disciplines about life and it disciplines you to be able to handle anything that you come across. Are there conversations with dad, perhaps, on these long runs? This year, I think about him quite a lot. Um, and, and I'm thinking about the reason why I'm doing this. And, and I know that that's what's going to carry me. People's messages on social media, friends, family, my run mm -hmm. club. That's what I think about when I'm running. Because that's what carries me. I'm Tell not me about doing this those all messages. by myself. Tell me about those messages that have come through with people who can identify with your pain, people who have been diagnosed with depression. Give me a few of the stories that really have up uplifted you. One of the stories that I received on, on Instagram was a lady that saw my launch video and she told me that she has tried committing suicide three times already and I've basically given her hope to still continue with her life mm. even though she's going through that. And, and for me, I carry her in my mm. spirit because I know that everything or every step that I take 
is me making sure that she also takes another step and, mm. and really live on. That's so, a beautiful story. Yeah. Is it heavy though? I mean, do you feel responsible for the people who have identified um, and who do now look up to you, who do think that, you know what, it's not the end of the world. Is there pressure to, to get to that finish line, to make your 180,000 Rand as you've pledged to do? And I guess not only when you get to the finish line, to do what you're doing and become this ambassador for a long time to come. There's a lot of pressure. Um, I think the, f the first sense of pressure was the fact that I came out uh, about my story and told people my story. A lot of people didn't know what happened. I would, I would never say it to my friends. So some friends, when they saw the video on social media, they're like, we didn't know, why didn't you tell us? Um, I had to deal with that first because that's when it hit me that, oh my gosh, like a lot of people know now my story is out there and I've now set this goal for myself. Mm -hmm. Um, and constantly I'm always thinking about it. I mean, I've never done the, the washi, the 160 kilometer race. It's going to be my first time. I think about it. Am I going to finish? Um, will I be okay to run through the race? I, I'm anemic. I worry if I'm going to get dizzy on the road, if I'm going to stop running. But for me, the one thing that always, always drives me is the fact that I'm not doing this only for myself. And I don't think there's any greater purpose to serve other people and to give other people an opportunity to live because that's exactly what it is mm -hmm. to to really give hope to people that feel like you know what today is the end i don't want to live anymore so that's what i carry in my mm -hmm. spirit they say that in south africa 23 people die every day and this is because of depression yeah. 180,000 rand that's where you've set the target at it's hashtag rise 18 but it's through back a buddy yeah. that they can sponsor you so how do we go about this how do we pledge our money is there a certain amount Give us the details. So the easiest way to find Becker Buddy is to just uh, Google uh, Rise18. The, the Becker Buddy, my, my page comes through as the first uh, mostly searched. Um, uh, That's a good thing. I know. <laughs> so people can just pick it up from there. And then people can visit Becker Buddy. So it's www.backabuddy.co.za forward slash Rise18. And people can pledge whatever money they have. Um, it's just making sure that we get to the 180. And... And the nice thing about Becca Buddy is that when people pledge the money, they can also leave a message. And in some days when I'm tired from the training and when I've got an injury, I just go to, to the website and just read people's messages of, of encouragement, of hope. And that's what keeps me going. I guess so that's the wind beneath your wings, definitely. right? That is what carries you. So you do fun. have an injury at the moment, a back injury, I believe. Does this set you back? You've done seven of your races already. Um, but how do you deal with that? Because it is grueling. Yeah. It is hard on your body. It is taxing. How do you stay fit? You mentioned anemia. It's the back. Uh, it's a missing toenail <laughs> <laughs> that you can't paint when you have yes. your pedi. Um So how do you remain on top of it all? I think it's just rising above the pain. And, and for me, the running symbolizes what people that suffer from mental illness go through. You know, they, they go through the pain or, or the emotional pain all by themselves. And, and for me, it's rising above that. It's not easy. I, at times, I run with, with tears in my eyes. Mm. And in the running community, then someone is going to see me and they're like, oh, Zanele, keep rising. Mm. You know, that just gives me goosebumps every time when I hear that. Um, and it's the people around me, um, and I keep on emphasizing this, that's what keeps me going. My run club has been so supportive. Last weekend, I did a 42 kilometer. At 23, my back started hurting. And I was like, I still have a long way, way to, to go. go yeah. I literally counted every step. I would look up and see the kilometer mark. Okay, 27. Let me get to 30. Let me get to 33. You know, but I had a, a, a club member who, who, who ran with me right through, you know. So it's the people that carry you. Um, and, and the thing is, this journey is not just about me. It's about the people around me. It's about my support system. I'm not doing this on my own. Um, and as much as the spotlight might be on me, it's the people around me that's going to help me to get through, through the goal. That's what you've got to love about fellow runners, right? Yeah. They're never going to leave you Definitely. at the back. They're going to help you over Definitely. that finish line. And that's the beauty, I think, about yeah. running. Your family, I mean, your mom, your siblings, I'm sure they must think that you've lost your mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think that they, they realized that when I read my first comments. <laughs> like, this one, <laughs> this is, one crazy. is not okay. <laughs> so my sister um, supported me last year at comments and... I think for her it was the first time that she saw 
what runners go through because I think she, she was also running because I mean she had to stand the whole day <laughs> look out for me make sure that I make it to the end <laughs> and not you miss know, you as and well and not miss yeah. me as well so the family is also very supportive they they want to do like a run with me even if it's like a kilometer so I, I'm grateful for all of that um, and I wouldn't be able to do it like I say if it wasn't for the family if it wasn't for my run club and, and everybody around me even the social media um, community the runners um, that I see that I, I may not know hmm. who would like greet me at a, at a race that's what keeps me going have you sought um, I guess professional help you've been affected by depression you don't have a depression per se but it's hit you uh, in a hard way yeah. how do you as you run overcome these obstacles you know and and make peace because you said for a long time there was anger for your dad yeah. leaving you yeah. and your siblings at a crucial time in your life so, I mean, I work, uh, at work they've also been very supportive for the campaign um, and they really supported me throughout the campaign. But I also have a life coach um, whom I see regularly more now than, than before, purely because of, of everything that I have to deal with. So, so that's, that's also helpful as well, the fact that I have somebody that I can talk to um, who may not be in, in the immediate circle and be emotional mm, with mm, me, mm, but mm. is going to help me. And that's important. We all need that comfort um, for us to talk to people. And even when people are depressed, um, people shouldn't suffer on their own. People must always reach out and speak out because um, you need to find someone to talk to. And if there isn't anybody in the family space or um, in your friend circle, reach out to an organization like SADAC who, who are more than willing to help. What would your message be to your dad? Shoo, okay. Um, I would tell him that I've forgiven him and I understand what he went through. I might not, actually I don't really understand because I don't think anybody would understand the extent of pain that someone goes through when they're yeah. depressed or suicidal. And I would tell him that he should be very proud of his kids and who we've become. Um, and his love and legacy will always live with us. Uh, his blood runs through my veins. and he'll always be a part of my life. And in everything that I do, I know that he would be very proud if he was here to see everything. You did say he was an amazing dad. He was. He has an amazing daughter. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Zanelli, your story is inspirational. Thank you so much for coming through. We at Wonder Woman back you all the way. We'll be tracking you all the way through to the Eastern Cape when you do your 160 kilometer race. Thank but you thank so you much. very much for coming through and doing what you do for a great cause. Thank you. More than welcome. Zanelli Shlatswayo there uh, with us in studio giving us uh, her side of the story and using sport for something really, really good. So don't forget back about is how you can go ahead and support her and remember if it is that you need to or you have a family member who would like to reach out south african anxiety and depression group the largest on the african continent when it comes to depression and they are there for you to reach out and get the help that you need and that's right from all of us here at wonder woman in sport don't forget to make a date every friday 1930 central african time as we discover what wonderful women are doing in the world from me, Romy Titus, and the team. Till next time, cheerio.